10 or 11 years ago. I was privileged as a businessman to attend Lausanne 2, which was a meeting of 4,000 religious leaders from around the world. Uh, pastors, educators, seminarians, missionaries, great men of God and women of God from around the world were gathered in, in um, Manila and the Philippines to describe how and, and strategize how can we reach our world for Jesus Christ. Well, they invited about a hundred of us lay people into that meeting. And as we were there, they gave us 15 minutes on the platform in this 10-day Congress on evangelism. And there was, there was an attorney in Fort Worth, Texas, who wrote a 27-page paper on the theology of the laity, 27 pages, typewritten, single-spaced, and we had to give that paper in Amsterdam in 15 minutes. Now, if you've ever heard an attorney open his mouth, he can't do that in 15 minutes, and so they went out and found a guy named Lee. He was a Chinese American Hong Kong stockbroker and they said Lee would you summarize this attorney's paper in 15 minutes to these religious leaders now I was there sitting in that audience of 4,000 and I can tell you I was a little apprehensive because he was going to address the religious leaders of our world and here's what he said I've never forgotten it as I've shared it people remember this they don't remember me but they remember this illustration here's what he said he said, have you ever noticed how differently frogs and lizards acquire their food? The frog sits and waits for the food to come to him. And when an unlucky insect happens to come by, he simply sticks out his tongue and reels it in. Now, if the lizard sat around like the frog, however, he would starve to death. And so the lizard goes out into his world and he hunts. Now, the frog in this analogy is the vocational Christian worker. He goes off to seminary and he gets a degree and he goes on staff somewhere and before you know it, ministry is just coming. Ministry opportunities are coming to him and he has his hands full. In fact, when big frogs come to town, they have to hide in hotel rooms or they'll be swamped. But the lizard, on the other hand, is a lay person. Ministry does not come seeking him or her out. Instead, he must move around in his environment and assess his fear of influence and establish friendships and serve people. And once he has earned the right to be heard, be ready to give a, account for the hope that is in him. And then he said this, and at this time I was sinking down in my chair saying, I'm afraid, is he not going to say this to the religious leaders of the world? And he said, I think the main problem in the world evangelization today is the underutilization of the lizard. And the big part of the problem lies with the frog. I said, oh no, he said it. In fact, the frog has a tendency to steal the show. What's more, the layperson looks at the frog and says, why, I can never be as great as that. And he's probably right, as long as he defines ministry in frog terms. But the lizard needs to know that God can use him as the lizard that he or she is. And when he catches that vision, and when he learns that evangelism is not an event but a process, and when he tastes the joy of seeing a friend find the Savior, he'll never want to give the ministry back to the frog again. Now, I thought the frogs would be upset. And the frogs loved it. Folks, I've shared that analogy, which I believe is truly divinely inspired. I've shared that analogy on 16 seminary campuses from the East Coast to the West Coast with frogs. And in every case, the frogs have jumped up and down and said, I want to be a frog better at equipping my lizards. I mean, the frogs, they love the analogy. You see, you and I are not frogs. And tomorrow morning, we're going to go places that your frog cannot go to. And in fact, if he tries to go to those places, sometimes they'll let him in. But when they ask him what he does, he has to say, well, I'm a frog. But we, but we as lizards can get into crevices that frogs can never get into because God has called us to be lifetime lizards for him. God's called you to the ministry. Number two.